Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. I am super excited and I hope you guys are ready to watch today's video. I am going to be sharing my kids end of the year book reviews on all of the books that they were required to read during our homeschooling year this year. This is going to cover read alouds. This is going to cover books that they read on their own that were either a part of their language arts curriculum or just books that I wanted them to read or books that they chose to read. This year I didn't really create a specific like reading list for each of my kids so it's a good mix of required reading from the curriculums we were using with books they just wanted to read with um, different read alouds that I just randomly selected because we did a book club this year so it's like a good mashup. Now keep in mind I have four kids they are in grades um, 10, 9, 7, and 5 this year. So if you are wanting any book recommendations, I recommend grabbing a pen and paper now. I've done this video a few years in a row now, and so the way that I do it is I have my kids keep a reading log, which these reading logs are available for sale on my website, and then they rate the book stars. So you can see here my son has his star ratings on his reading log. Um, no questions asked, just tell me what you would give that book. And so keep in mind this information is coming directly from my kids. I do not, you know, ask them or probe them. This is what they said. And so I'm going to just share the book, title, share the star rating. And so, you know, if you are like, oh, I want 10th grade recommendations, then if you get a pen and paper, you'll be ready to write down some titles. Before we get any farther into today's video, I do want to thank today's video sponsor, which is Night Zookeeper. So you guys, we are getting ready to head into the very last few weeks of our homeschool year. I know many of you are finishing up your homeschooling years as well. Different years, different seasons call for different things when it comes to summer learning for our family. And so I just want to share Night Zookeeper with you guys because that'll be something that I have my younger two kids doing on a weekly basis during the summer to keep fresh on their language arts, their writing skills, and just a good use of screen time, which is why I've continued to partner with them and share them with you guys. Night Zookeeper is so good for those breaks from homeschooling. Night Zookeeper and a good book, and I think that's the way we're going to approach summer this year. I don't think my kids actually asked me to not give them any kind of like summer bridge workbooks um, and they also voiced some other concerns so um, I think we're just gonna do like night zookeeper and other educational type activity things like that and just make sure everyone stays reading throughout our summer break and throughout our travels that's another great way that night zookeeper can be a blessing in your family's life is it is available you know you can put it on your um, kids devices and as you travel they can use it um, you can take it with you wherever you go or you can have a more strict setup and require 30 minutes each day on it whatever you want to do Night Zookeeper is an award-winning creative writing platform for kids ages 5 through 12. And I've shared so many times in the past, but I know not everyone watches every single video. So they have hundreds of interactive games on there that your kids will absolutely love playing. So much, in fact, that they won't even notice that they're working on spelling or grammar or uh, sentence structure or... Um, you know, creative writing or whatever it is that they're focusing on, they will find a game that they love. They can create their own characters and implement them into the story and then have them appear on the screen. The screens can interact with your other kids if you have multiple children who are using it because they do offer a multi-sibling discount. So you guys can save 50% off on your subscription when you use the link down below to check out Night Zookeeper. There is no code, but you you do have to go through the link that's in the description box and if you've been on the fence about it try it through the summer I think you will absolutely love it but it's a great time to kind of think about okay how are we gonna transition into summer break what kind of things am I gonna be using to keep my kids minds engaged because as a homeschooler uh, you know when you start back with your full school routine in the fall 
you'll be glad that you had your kids staying engaged and not completely like abandoning all things learning. And plus, I think it really just sends the right message that learning continues throughout the year always. It just might change based on the season so that we can travel and do other things, but it doesn't mean like school, start and stop. You know, learning is always, and that's a good thing. And so I think Night Zookeeper is one way to really show your kids that. So again, that information for Night Zookeeper will be down below. Make sure you guys use the link that's down there. Thank you for your support on my links. Speaking of links, um, pretty much every book that I can will be linked on my Amazon uh, page under homeschool books tab. I have a tab there because I try to organize it in categories. Now, I want to tell you, if it's an older book, like my kids read it a few years ago or something like that, you might need to scroll to the bottom to find it. So with that in mind, let's jump into my kids' book reviews. I'm going to start with my oldest and move to my youngest. My oldest is in the 10th grade and she is a girl, so um, some of that might be reflected in their book choices, but I'm just going to read you the titles and give you the star rating, that way you can hear what my kids thought of what they read this year. Alright, so starting with my oldest daughter's reading log, again, let me just say that these were books assigned for school. If I let my kids include every book that they read for fun um, or enjoyment, not that they didn't enjoy these, but you know, something they were reading in their personal reading time, we would be here until 2026. So these are books that they read during school time, even though that line is very blurred when it comes to reading. Okay. So she gave Men of Iron two stars. She gave Harriet and the Moses of Her People. These, these two books so far were from The Good and the Beautiful. Um, two stars. Sh this one also from The Good and the Beautiful, The Sagebrush Surgeon. She gave three stars. And The Girl of the Limberlost is her fourth book that she's been reading for her assigned language arts. Um, or English class with the good and the beautiful. She gave that three stars. She gave the book um, All Creatures Great and Small, James Harriet book here, um, five stars. She said this is one of her favorite books she's ever read in her whole life. We obviously watched the show, so that may have had something to do with it. Uh, she read the Lord of the Rings trilogy, Fellowship of the Rings, Two Towers, Return of the King. She gave all of those five stars. She loved that trilogy. Uh, to follow it up, she also read The Hobbit, and um, this is another Tolkien book. She gave that five stars. Um, then moving on, she read a few of these YWAM um, uh, international adventures. These are true stories of missionaries who paid a great price uh, to spread the word. These are a little bit graphic. They're they're very real. They they don't sugarcoat it. Um, but she is interested in mission work, and so obviously this is very inspiring to her. So she read this one, Brushko, and she read another one called Torches of Joy, and she gave them both five stars. Um, I'm going to be ordering more of these. Um, she also read another one like that called Cry from the Streets, and she loved it. You can buy those directly from YWAM on their website. She read this uh, book here called The Princess, and she gave this one five stars. She really loved this. This was, uh, it's a, like a, the most, it's a Christian, old, like a little bit of romance type um, story, and she absolutely loved it. So, uh, she read that. She also read this book about Johnny Cash's life. It's basically was his uh, biography. Um, let's see, Greg Laurie wrote this book. And uh, so she gave this five stars. She really learned a lot and enjoyed it. Uh, she read The Hiding Place from Corey Ten Boom, gave that five stars about Corey Ten Boom. And she read this book here called Until We Meet Again. Um, by Michael Corin. I'll try to find this. I found this at a used bookstore and I just know that she really enjoys books uh, written about the World War II period and she read five stars It had a happy ending um, amongst a lot of sadness. So those are some book recommendations and reviews. Take her star ratings 
or leave them. That's just what she thought of it. Not to say that the book isn't great. It's just, you know, what my 16 year old thought. So now I will share with you guys what my almost 15 year old son thought of his assigned readers for school. All right. So my son who is in the 10th grade is an avid reader, but he didn't do a lot of assigned reading for school this year, but he was reading like a machine in his free time. So, you know, that's where it kind of blends. Um, anyhow, he gave me, let's see, um, this uh, Star Wars Legends book that he has read. Look at the size, size of these. There's like 20, I think, and he's read all of them. He gives them five stars. So these Star Wars books are written like in the 90s, and uh, he's He's hugely into this. My husband was back in the day too. And um, so five stars for all of those. There's one called The Silmarillion. He also gave that five stars. He read Return of the King. Oh, I'm sorry. The Silmarillion is a Tolkien book, five stars. Return of the T King, he also read um, by Tolkien. He gave it five stars. He read, um, Booker T. Washington, that was an assigned reader for his language arts by The Good and the Beautiful. He gave that one star. He read Brushko, that missionary story you just saw um, with my in my daughters. He gave that five stars, so you can see they both really enjoyed that. He read a book called Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. He gave that three stars. He read Courtship of Princess Leia, five stars. He read Screw Tape Letters from C.S. Lewis. He gave that five stars. He read The Manliness of Christ uh, by Dale Partridge. He gave that four stars. He read Just David from The Good and the Beautiful. He gave this one star. And he read Luke Skywalker and the Shadows of Mindor, and he gave that four stars. So he reads a ton, I mean 19 books, but they're just not, you know, assigned readers. And I wasn't about to pull all 19 out from my shelf, but those are some of his reviews from this school year of books that he read. Um, and again, take his reviews and his star ratings, <laughs> take them or leave them. Okay, moving on to my son who is in the seventh grade. He read the Mandy Collection Volume 2. Look at that book. <laughs> He gave that four stars. There's other ones in this as well, um, and he really liked those. He read the original Robin Hood. He gave this five stars. He did tell me that when he started reading this, the old language was a little bit hard for him to uh, decipher what it was meaning, but then once he started reading it, he said his brain just kind of started picking up the words, and so I found that to be really interesting with that. He also read this book called Echo Mountain by Lauren Wolk, and he gave that two stars, but I know other kids, like my friend's daughter who read this, who loved it, so again, take their recommendations with a grain of salt. Um, he read a bunch of Christian heroes then and now books. These are from YWAM. He read Adoniram Judson. He read Gladys Aylward. He read Wilford Grenfell. He read a few others, but I wasn't going to grab them all. Um, and he always gives these five stars. These books are amazing, you guys. We love them so much. They're from YWAM. You can buy them on Amazon too. Um, love them. So those were his reviews. Um, he also did a dinosaur course from Master Books for his elective this year. Um, and basically it's Christian apologetics through the, um, through, <laughs> I don't know how to say this, um, just, you know, sharing what scripture says and supports of dinosaurs versus what it doesn't. So he had a ton of books. I think it came with like seven of them. And these might look like picture books, but they're actually really in-depth uh, textbooks about different elements of dinosaurs with a biblical worldview. Again, he read a ton of these um, and they're like, there's some substance to these and he loved them. So if you have a dinosaur loving kid who's a little older, these will be amazing. Um, and he, he gave all of these five stars. So the last child of mine that we are going to uh, share with you guys today is my youngest and she definitely read the most assigned reading in school simply because she's in the fifth grade and um, I don't know, she, she reads shorter books and 
Uh, I, don't, I, I really don't know why actually. <laughs> My older kids, as they've gotten older, they, are, they have so many other things to do that, you know, assigning them reading is not something I really have to keep up with because they're just always reading before bed, they're reading in their free time, and so, you know, they read a lot of free time books, but I wanted to keep this strictly like in school. So you're gonna see that her list is the longest. She is in the fifth grade, and so a lot of you will probably wanna get your pens handy because I know the majority of you who watch are for those younger grades, so I've got some books to share of her reviews to sum this video up. All right, my last little ladies reading log is right here. It has a hole in it. It has seen better days. <laughs> um, but we are gonna start with Black Beauty. She gave this three stars. She read Hatchet. She gave that three stars. She read Chico of the Andes from The Good and the Beautiful. She gave this two stars. She read Esperanza Rising. She gave this five stars. She read, where is it? Patty Woodlawn, she gave this four stars. She read Woods Runner, she gave this one star. She read Betsy and Tracy Go Over the Hill, one star. She gave, she read Detectives in Togas, all my kids have read this. She gave it five stars. She read Marjorie, which is another The Good and the Beautiful reader. She gave this four stars. She's read probably 15 of the classic Nancy Drews, the old ones, and she gave them all five stars. She read this series right here, yes, this, it's a series of three books, um, Princess Academy, that's a look at them. She gave these five stars. My oldest daughter also read those. She read The Clockmaker's Son, that's a The Good and the Beautiful book. She gave it five stars, she really liked this one. She read this book, uh, Leon, A Long Way Home. She gave it four stars. And she read Kira Kira. She gave that three stars. I didn't bring that one up. And she read A Cricket in Times Square just for fun. We read this as a read aloud at the very beginning of our homeschooling um, journey. She wanted to read it again and she gave it five stars. So those are her reviews for her books. And uh, that is, that's all right, I know that was a lot, that was a lot for you, that was a lot for me, but there's just no way for me to do it any other way. I hope this video gives you guys some, uh, maybe a few, maybe too many, maybe more than you wanted, book suggestions for your kids next year or in the years to come. Maybe you're keeping a, a running list for their entire lives. I hope I was able to help you with some book recommendations. As always, do your own research, make sure it you know fits what is appropriate for your family. But that's what my kids thought of the books that they read this year. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure you check out the links to Night Zookeeper down below and I will see you guys again really soon. Bye friends.